up heavy metal over the six pack how are we doing today <laughs> yeah i know it's a podcast you can't really talk to me uh today's episode was uh, pretty freaking awesome uh, we had uh, we had a live in studio guest with um uh, uh band helitosis who are celebrating their ep release that just came out on march 5th this past weekend and one of the most insanely unique creative and pretty much all around awesome good time uh, EP release parties that I have ever been a part of. So I wanted to introduce you guys to this band like right out of the gate, like with a song that we're gonna they're gonna share. Uh, this song is called Hero Out. I want you to listen to it, then I want you to listen to the interview. We'll we'll see you in a few. Steps up that problematic ladder. Twenty one steps up that problematic ladder. Thought you would see the end of your day. Banging around in this here bed. Now the time draws near us. You hit your up like flowers up, it's all you got here, it's all in the end, it's all in the
Less or more? No, to have to, to be a good time for everybody. Yeah, yes, I, I try. I make no guarantees ever, but it's fine. Like I'm, my hangover's fine now. I'm good. So like I'll, I'll be fine. Other than that, you guys would just be talking to Dave the whole time. Pretty much. He never shuts up. <laughs> it's somewhat true. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 there's, there's truth to that statement. Oh, Jim's um, it. We're in a little bit of trouble today because we don't have Anthony. Anthony is usually our ringleader. Oh. He keeps us under control. Uh oh. He's our left and right limit, so we might get a little crazy. I mean, where's Anthony? Uh, Anthony RIP. unfortunately had to get called into work today, so ah. he had, uh, yep, he had to be, uh, he had to do the responsible adult thing, and he said, uh, "Marcus and Dave, you guys got this one on your own." He's like, oh, for it's my family. Some, piece he's like, of it's shit. just some crap band. <laughs> <or nothing." laughs> no, he was actually really bummed. He was really looking forward to sitting down with you guys. He specifically told me not to fuck it up, so he he must have thought so highly of you. Yeah. <laughs> For him to say that, up. okay, because I I do fuck up a lot of shit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's one thing I'm good at: it's drinking beer and fucking stuff up. Is that actually true? Did he tell you that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably gave him a t-shirt. Yeah. It's like wear this and remember these words. Oh, yeah, An- the Anthony's our yeah. podcast dad. <laughs> I've been putting time out a couple times. He's gonna be so bad at us. <laughs> um, so we are very fortunate. Uh, three three awesome gentlemen actually made like a, a really long trip to like actually come hang out with us and uh, and talk about their music. We got Chris Gino and Josh from uh, Helitosis. Woohoo, gentlemen! Hello, hello. Hi. How are we? Good. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for making the trek out. It weren't bad. They offered me gas money, too. <laughs> Who did? Well, not you. <laughs> he bought pizza. Well, you got pizza, he you got gas. gas money. I didn't get anything. And I was like, no. He, so he bought me a coffee and a tea. And I'm like, this is the most I've ever made. <laughs> hey, like you like that sometimes. I've made yes. it, bitches. <laughs> yeah, right. Somebody buys me a pizza, though. That's that's damn near marriage material. Yeah, two, two pizzas. pizzas. Yeah. 
Yep. Are you uh, are you free later? Or, uh, <laughs> well, there's actually still some pizza left. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I told get them I didn't want to bring it in because then you guys would want a piece. I was like, notice how they left, <laughs> notice how they left it in the car. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> so the when I when I first became an official member of this podcast, the first time I did, and never since, uh, I made some some homemade pizzas and brought them over here, and. Uh, it was probably not the smartest thing to to be eating pizza on a talk show, <laughs> 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 but you know it was still pretty good. So these guys are a uh, hard rock metal band from. Uh, technically, we're tri-state because he's Rhode Island, he's Connecticut, and I'm Mass. Okay. We okay. rehearse in Rhode Island though. Okay. We have our own own studio. It's actually Chris's. He built it, um, and so the album was we recorded ourselves. And somehow managed to not completely screw it up. And then we brought it to uh, Weird Beard, David Weird Beard Emerson, who owns Audio Fetish Studios. And he was able to polish a turd. Wow. Exciting stuff. Yeah, it's a bit of a learning curve. Oh, yeah. Bought the studio first. And then I went to this little seminar thing they had at Guitar Center. And being a drummer, I never ran a sound board or anything. So the guy's t- saying, yeah, it's just like a soundboard. I'm like, well, how's the soundboard set up? He's like, you just bought a studio? <laughs> uh, yep. I was like, yeah, whatever books you got, whatever videos you can say, like, I'm going to need them all. Yep. Yeah, we went through some hard times originally. We recorded some some terrific dog crap. And then, uh, but, you know, like, I think that was how we kind of got to a point where when we did record the album, we had an idea of what we were doing enough so that the main idea that we had was, like, let's get a good capture. Because if you get a good capture, then, you know, the the whole fix it and post thing doesn't have to happen as much, mm-hmm. so you know we did try a couple different things and um, I, I I love to talk about the guitar tone because my thing was that I wanted to try to make sure that one mic got a decent sound, so I mic'd like fifteen things, <laughs> I was like <laughs> micing every you know I had a mic up my ass, and um, when I when we brought the the tracks not literally, um, <laughs> oh <laughs> no you got to sing through that thing afterwards, they get bacteria. Um, Taste so, is terrible. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to breathe in heavy on that. But when I brought it to Weird Beard, I was like, you know, all right, I've got like 18 mics, you know, on three different amp setups. You know, like one of these has got to work. And I think part of what he, you know, looked at was like, I don't want to go through all this shit. <laughs> but he's like, honestly, dude, it sounds exactly, you know, like big the way it is. Like, I don't, I'm not going to change anything. Like, I'll put, you know, compression and stuff on it. But as far as like, trying to you know find a perfect sound like you did that you mixed it to sound good yeah so i was lucky <laughs> it's pretty cool have you always recorded your own stuff no we did we recorded with him before we did a couple of um theme songs we went through a theme song phase <laughs> so we recorded a theme song for there's a radio show out of worcester called uh, radio of horror on wcuw 91.3 I can remember that because it's in the lyrics, and uh, <laughs> so we recorded uh, we recorded his theme song, and then we recorded. Um, there's Fat Foot Films is a local film company, and I work with them a lot. So we recorded um, we recorded a song called "Before You Die," which they actually shot a video for us, and it was for a calendar that they did every year for a while. So it was you know a bunch of girls scantily clad slashing up dudes. It was horrible. Horrible. No, oh. We had to be around them for like a full day. Are you guys okay? Yeah. It's, it therapy? took a little while to get over. Yeah. <laughs> do Does anybody need a hug? Every time I see the calendar, <laughs> now I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Please, not April. <laughs> <laughs> it's November. That was her name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cool. Like, So we ended up, we shot a video the same day that they did one of those shoots for the, the month. And, um, and then we did a theme song because they do a behind the scenes documentary. So we did the theme th- song for that. And then we did another, we did a couple more theme songs, right? For them, like. Well, we did the 48 hour films festival once. I don't know why they didn't call the next three years. But, you know, I <laughs> yeah. thought it was fun. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. And then Mustache Brigade, which is a, a short film like uh, series that they have. We did the theme song for that. And those three we recorded at, with uh, Audio Fetish Studios. And then we. I think we had another a seven song thing with a couple theme songs on it and but this is our first full length and it does it does pair with um we wrote uh, i wrote i have to take responsibility i guess <laughs> <laughs> a novella that goes with it so it's 10 <laughs> chapters and each chapter goes with a song and uh you know the lyrics from the, the are from the book that go into the the songs 
Oh, very cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. I'll give you one. I meant to bring him in. I didn't. I mean, I don't know. If I'm offended. All the good stuff stays in the car. <laughs> 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 you won't be really offended until after you read it. I just want. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to getting a calendar, man. I mean, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm waiting for. So uh, I, I saw some. Uh, I saw some posts doing uh, my my pre-show. Uh, my 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 pre-show preparation. We'll call it as uh, as brief as it is. Year and a half in between rehearsals. Yeah. So uh, the dark ages got got you guys hired, huh? Yeah. Well, we're technically after this next coming up show, uh, upcoming show, we're 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 done as a band. Um, oh. Like as this, yeah, this incarnation yeah, at least. Incarnation. Yeah. Um, because Gino moved like another hour away. You hour pretty 20-ish. much. You're you're out like mm-hmm. uh, forty minutes away from there. I yep. moved. So everybody moved a further away from the studio. Mm-hmm. So as a band, we can't really rehearse or anything. So we're doing this album and record, uh, album and book release, and that's going to be like our last hurrah as this band. And then I have another like couple guys in the wings that I'm trying to lube up for nice. the next incarnation of the band. But they were like, "We'll do the drive. We'll do the, the bullshit to do the one last show." So yeah. I have to thank them because yeah. they uh, they came through for me. That's what's up. That's awesome. That's sad, but it's awesome. Yeah, well, that's the the thing, too. He's like, oh, you guys want to play this show? I'm like, yeah, you know, it's been a little while. I miss it a little bit. And it's a lot easier to commit to one show, mm. like, you know, four or five practices in a show versus, hey, we got the show. Can you come? Hey, we're playing here. Can you come? Yeah. You know, we got to practice once a week, twice a week, whatever. You know, that's just – it's a major commitment for something that's, you know, supposed to be fun and a side thing. You know, to do it right, you really got to make that commitment. So yeah. that's why I left because it just wasn't fair – for Josh, like this is his baby. Like he said, he t- had wrote it ten years ago, you know. Finally got published and you know get everything going. So it's like I don't want to be the guy in the way and being like, oh, well maybe next week or oh I can't right. do this show and you know. So luckily he found a new new drummer and a new bass player and they're gonna keep going. It's awesome. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. So uh, I don't know, man. I mean, there's always seasons. You know, there's seasons in every band. Mm. That's how it goes. Gotta roll I'm like shocked right now. Now I'm like depressed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that answer. <laughs> well, it was good while it lasted. <laughs> uh, well, we're we're going to do this one show and then we're never going to talk to each well, other it's again. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wait, is that an option? <laughs> or mandated. It's funny because when you guys sat down here, I was like, you know, we uh, we, we usually got, got some questions up our sleeve for you, you know, keep you on your toes, but, you know, it's not our fault if you break up after the show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, no worry. We're already breaking. Like, oh, no. <laughs> We just show up to the divorce, like, oh, come on. (laughs) So the next important question, I guess, so whose car is it again? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we weren't going to break up, actually, until we got down here, and then we were like, you know what? Uh, Dude, wouldn't it be awesome if one of us got left in Winchenden? (laughs) (laughs) Said no one ever. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It's usually more of the, uh, you want us to go where? Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. I promise you, there's a a house there, I promise. (laughs) A house. It's not a farm. Hey, that's hey. where our studio is. Hey, I'm not knocking it. Uh. I'm just saying we are a right to farm community out here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we got yeah, more we'll... livestock than we do people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody's got to grow them. Hey, that's what's up? We used There's... to have, we used to do the chickens and the the ducks and whatnot, but that didn't last very long. Yeah, I, I don't even know how many I've fed to wild animals. I, I <laughs> it's a freaking dinner bell. I don't it's like yeah. what's the, it's like what's the point? Yeah, so like you got this little thing that like you keep warm and like until it gets like all fat and puffy and then all of a sudden it's gone. And it's <laughs> like okay, you got ten eggs for all your work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, you get eggs for days. It's like, yeah, it cost me four hundred and eight dollars <laughs> 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 to uh, to get the dozen, <laughs> the first dozen. It's like, what the hell are we doing here? Yeah. And some martinis and eggs. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, we had a whole bunch of issues coyotes out here. Mm. Going after livestock and stuff, and there's some, there's some, there's some families out in this area that are that are damn near Amish. I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> so if you got an album that's uh, that's going along with a book, so like so every song is a chapter in a book. It, it, would that be the definition? Would we call that a concept album? I think that's fair. This is a concept. Tell yeah. us about the concept. So. As much as you're willing to, to, to splurge right Oh, now. I can talk for I mean, this has been in the work for 15 years, so I've got all kinds of emotions to unleash. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, 
And then so she broke dumped up with, me. Yeah. I was just saying that you <laughs> broke up with a couple of girls yeah. over too. Can you read this? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> uh, yeah. I lost a lot of girls over this. They're like, I'm not listening or reading this damn thing anymore. And I'm like, we're still six years out. <laughs> um, I, it started like... I used to write. I used to write a lot. You know, I loved to write, but I loved to play music, and it was always like you know one or the other. And I kind of, I got to this point where I'm like, if I do both at the same time and I combine this project, like that gives me a leg up on most writers because most writers are just like you know they write a book and if they're lucky they get to go to a book signing or two. I'm like I can just play this at every fucking show that we play. And it also kind of gave me a wider foray than just being like, you know, hey, you know, I wrote a metal album. So the idea originally, I was like, I'm going to bang something out in six months. So about 15 years later. <laughs> uh, Writing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the book took a long time, you know, itself. But then, like, again, you know, like incarnations of the band kind of changed and Chris joined the band and... You know, we'd end up deciding to do a studio when we really want, you know, to, to put the studio together. And then, you know, uh, we had bassists leave and stuff. And then Gino kind of came to us at the, the, the 10th hour, 12th hour and, and stepped in and, and really, you know, helped to make things cohesive. Um, but the, the, the idea was originally I wanted to write the most disgusting thing I could. Like my idea was, you know, uh, I don't know how great of a product it's going to be because I don't have a lot of money or connections. But if I write something that's, you know, really offensive, it might get some notice. <laughs> and uh, so I tried to do that. And then, like, uh, it's based loosely off of a serial killer. Um, but what was interesting is because it took so long and it went through so many different processes and so much of my life was, was involved in it. At the end, I realized that it kind of had to do with me personally becoming sober and becoming, like, accepting of things that happened in my childhood and and overcoming like literally overcoming demons in me i think you know i, I don't believe in, in actual demons but i think that at the end of the day i realized i wasn't really a bad person i just had some issues that i needed to take care of and once i kind of got through that and got through that mental block was you know a moment when you know like a, a serial like the serial killer in the in the novella where they kind of they find out their their true self and um, so it was kind of neat, you know, like I think a lot of writers, a lot of creators, they do things and they don't realize when they're doing it, like the real effect that's, that's going on within them as well. And that's what I took away most from this. Oh, well, I mean, congratulations on retiring from being a serial killer. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you won't find the bodies. <laughs> Not even in the music. <laughs> There's no clues. That's awesome, though. It's a pretty cool Thanks. concept. Thank you. If that is in fact a, a title that we can that we can call it based on a book concept, <laughs> well, I, okay, it was a stupid <laughs> question. Right? What do you want? <laughs> it's my second interview I've ever done in my life. Okay, like <laughs> it's like You're what am I, what I supposed to ask? What, what's your job. favorite color? Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Peanut butter or bacon? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Together. Oh, <laughs> BLT with peanut butter. I'm with it. I don't know, I'm hungry. This is this is gonna cause like a derailment, like a, like a digressive, so epic proportions if we go down this route. So, um, what was the initial drive? Was the initial drive for the book or the initial drive for the music? I guess initially, like I had started, I was in another band and I left the band to kind of I wanted to just create myself, uh, my own you know style or music or whatever. And so there was already a couple of things written. So. Um, I have to mention that it all started from a poem that I wrote for my buddy, this kid, David Gray, who's that's one of the characters in the novella. And he, uh, on his 21st birthday, it was right before his 21st birthday, I was living on Nantucket, and I was writing a poem for him. And so the song on the album, Hero Out, is actually started there. So the, the lines are like 21 steps up that problematic ladder, because he was hitting 21 years old. And I was writing this poem, and I remember I put it down for a couple of days, and my friend James uh, called and was like, Dude, Dave's dead. He, you know, he already had Hep C. He'd been had he had issues with heroin and blah blah blah. He met this girl that messed him up, and he just decided to take himself out. And so I finished writing the poem kind of with that in mind, and then stuffed it away. And then you know, three four years later, when I decided to take this project on, that was what like it hit me. Like I, I wanted to write a song. I wanted to write something for him. So it originally started with the idea of kind of like a nod to him. And 
Um, so I'd say it started with the music, and then like the idea for the book kind of came along as like, like I said, I just wanted to do something so I could to keep two passions going at one time. Sure, sure. Good question. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you get a star. I love it when people tell me I do a good job. <laughs> and a sticker. <laughs> do I get a sticker? I like stickers. No, it's definitely no. a cool thing too because <laughs> you have to you have to figure like on average like your songs are gonna be like three and a half to five minutes. So like if there's like so much more that you can elaborate on, <clears throat> like having like another uh, outlet in yeah. order to like kind of do all the spillover, so to, so to speak, or. You do like vague messages and like the way, the smaller version, and the, you want you want the actual story. It's over here, right? Yeah, because you you know you think about a lot of bands they write lyrics that are, you know, they're like, what is fucking talking about an airplane and a horse? Like what the you know is that is it a drug reference? And yes, I'm talking about the Chili Peppers. <laughs> um, you know, so I think you got a good point there. Like it's definitely when you can kind of take it into a context where you can can elaborate on it. It's it's nicer to get your message across, even if your message is about raping and killing. Weird, awkward silence. There's um. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, guys. This is my, my fault. I'm proud. <laughs> I like it's adding gas to the fire. So <laughs> just, sometimes I'll just let things do, you talk? know, like, yeah. come on, who's gonna say something? Huh? Oh, I can go. I can do this all day. <laughs> I like. I like. I'll stand silence. in the. Office. I was. I was actually surprised Dave wasn't gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's like, oh, I got at least eight minutes before I have to like chime back in, and then like, and then like nothing. It's like crickets over here. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> thanks, sometimes Dave. saying nothing is is more powerful. Well, th thanks, Dave. Good night, living, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I hired you. <laughs> uh, not getting too deep into the story, though. I'm obviously, like the what the uh, the Facebook page and like all you guys' outlets, a lot of visual elements. Who's responsible for the visuals? Um, so I hire. I'm lucky to have a lot of, of friends that um, that do photo and you know photography and video and so forth. So, Shauna LeMay Convery, who her husband is part of Fat Foot, did like the, the the Spider Demon Woman with the band shot, and then um, we hired a guy in the Philippines named uh, Steven Yoyota. He did our album and um, the novella cover. Um, so, and then I, I have a guy named. Uh, buddy named Derek Rook who owns Rough House Publishing and he's an amazing artist and unfortunately we wanted to release the book and everything through his uh, publishing house and use his artwork but it just didn't line up time ways he, he had, had too much on his plate so um, but that yeah happened. yeah but we're very lucky to, to know a couple of decent artists oh that was the other uh, theme song oh yeah Rough, Rough House, House Road, Road. Yep. yep and we did Gore Shriek yep yep yeah, we did a couple songs for him. All right, so the the, the boring interview questions. What get, what get everybody in the music? What are the influences for everybody? Oh, mine was purely uh, vindictive brotherhood. My brother started uh, clarinet in like fifth grade in the school <laughs> band, and I'm like, well, if he's gonna play an instrument, I'm gonna play an instrument. And then I was like, all right, what's the easiest to learn, and I won't get my ass kicked for? So I was like, ah, drums. <laughs> and then I started, uh, did pretty well at it, and then um, got you know pushed into lessons and doing everything else, all state orchestra, uh, Rhode Island Philharmonic, like all that like stuff. But metal has always been like the most fun because being a drummer, like if you're not playing, like I'm not a <clears throat> metronome, you know. So if I'm not mm. playing, if I'm not doing something fun, then it's you know wasn't worth it. So I got into like hardcore and metal, and then just never played country again <laughs> <laughs> i feel so bad for country drummers dude like just imagine like every single set the exact same <laughs> same fucking tapping over and over every single song so i'm glad i'm proud of you for graduating <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I no, gotta as be, a kid on the school bus gig. is like here you gotta listen to this it was like old school metallica megadeth sepultura and my head like exploded. <laughs> and like, it was on a Walkman. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Totally. Here's this tape. Don't wear yep. it out. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets uh, a little fuzzy in certain spots. Yeah, those are my favorite songs. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> oh. Only hit rewind eighteen times on that one. Yeah. Yep. So that's what got me into music, and that which you know was kind of just a roundabout way. Like I never thought of it, never had any interest in it, and just became a huge part of my life. Awesome. I pulled you out of retirement too. You had quit 
playing after imprint right yeah i was in a band that um was like on the cusp just like every other band you know going on tour van and trailer and it was awesome uh dropped out of college and basically did like two two month stints and then uh had some looks from like sony and you know some major record labels but nothing that stuck so after like two years i was like yeah you know i gotta start thinking about you know actually getting a job and doing something and so then after that i was kind of like burnt out a little bit from it because uh, like i said i started in sixth grade started playing in bands seriously like in seventh eighth grade like 14 years old trying to get back into the bar to get my freaking drum set out <laughs> like guys like where are you going i'm like get my shit i'm like come yeah. on so uh it was uh i was probably two years maybe three years i bought a house i was kind of concentrating on that and um he needed a job which apparently this is the only part i heard because the kid who introduced us he's like yeah i told you he played in a band that's what i told you first i'm like oh i just heard he needed a job <laughs> So we were working together, and he's like, yeah, you know, I play music, and I get this. Like, yeah, I just have a hard time finding a drummer. He's like, yeah, but I got a bass player. I got songs. I got this or that. And I'm like, all right, we'll come over, and we'll, you know, we'll try playing. And then uh, I guess he had been burned a couple of times because he didn't introduce me to the bass player at first. <laughs> he's like, well, let's see if this is going to work out first, and then we'll bring him in. But now I'm thinking maybe it was the other way around because <laughs> he was kind of a little bit of a weirdo. Huh? <laughs> no, Mike. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love him. Yeah, but uh, yeah. And then um, was, he keeps it interesting. He said all the artwork, all the production stuff, the video. You know, that's all Josh's brainchild. Child, and it's like, hey, you guys want to do this? It's like, just tell me where to go, and I'll, and I'll be there. But uh, it's all been fun. It's all worked out pretty well. Like they're all talented people. Um, so like that photo shoot he was talking about was in a basement with like a bunch of like spider webs from a you know costume party yeah and you look at it and you're like all right that was fun and all but to take it from that with like a black sheet behind you and fake spider webs to what that is like the post that these guys do yeah. is just amazing Phenomenal. Yep. yeah it's crazy how talented some people are with that stuff yep out of my realm of expertise i'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> so i drew you a picture it's a guy of a thing with stuff Happy banding. <laughs> it looks like you used crayons on that. That's very nice. Non-refundable, by the way. <laughs> you get what you get and you don't get upset. Stick, stick figures are still cool for album covers, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Three Days Grace. It works for them for an album. <laughs> right? <That's true>. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Gina? Uh, so, I don't know. I had a weird kind of intro to music. Like, I played saxophone in, like, school, elementary school and stuff like that. But I never really, like, liked music or got into it until, like... I don't know, middle school, and then I got into, like, pure religious metal, like, uh, Pantera, Metallica, Disturbed was, like, a big band at the time, um, and then I started, I had a guitar, but I, like, never learned it, and I didn't know how to read music or anything, um, and then I figured out that, like, tabature is a thing, and I was like, oh, I can read numbers, like, I could teach this to myself, it's not gonna be that hard, and, like, ever since then, I've just been teaching, like, everything to myself, so, started on guitar, and, then I think every guitarist can play a little bit of bass. Um, this is the first band that I've been in that I've played bass, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of went from there, did a couple different bands, and then got introduced to Josh by uh, a friend of a friend, and uh, I got sucked into this. <laughs> nice. Um, I was, my parents were Jehovah's Witnesses, actually, um, so that might explain a couple things. <laughs> and so like you know they they both love music but i think that you know i wasn't allowed to listen to a lot of a lot of music see horror movies that kind of stuff so um you know when i got when i hit about 14 was when i started to say like i don't think that the jehovah's witness lifestyle fits my uh my thing or you know and and um i met a bunch of kids in school that were into like punk rock and the misfits and bad religion and you know and um and they were like we're in a band you want to come play in a band we're called gum dumpster and i was like yeah uh sure and so, and so that's kind of where it started but i really didn't take it very seriously until i was probably like 20 25 26 i i moved back into the area ran into some friends and they're like you know we're st starting another punk band you know you want to sing be drunk on stage and i was like yeah of course <laughs> two things i'm great at yeah <laughs> So uh, I started playing with them, and that's like it was kind of like a shift in mentality for me because that's when I was like, 
like I, I want to do this all the time. Like this is, you know, like I, I don't know, I can make a living off of it, but it's something that I want to invest time in. And um, yeah, and I think I just got to tell the story of when Gino came into the band. It was funny because we met at like you played a gig and friend of a friend introduced us, and I gave you some. I'm known for like inspirational speeches, <laughs> which probably should not be listened to because people sometimes pay attention to me just going off on a riff and then realize like oh i quit school because you said it was a good idea and i'm like i was on acid <laughs> I, you should not but no, i was yeah. high when i said that man yeah <laughs> ricky i was high when i said yeah. that <laughs> but i gave you like some inspirational speech and you were like yeah fuck my job and like <laughs> I'm gonna play music, and you came to the studio, and that that was it. Yeah, I was also in a band that like I wasn't really happy with at the time either. And fit to fly. Yeah, um, did like a second iteration of it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We just like I I like saw the passion and like how you talked about music, and it's really hard to find people to play with that like you know take it as serious as you want to take it, or you know just are excited to do it. And and Josh is definitely that person. So like I recognized that immediately, and we definitely hit it off. I think we talked for like two hours that night and then you're like hey come to my studio <laughs> then i did like a few days later and yeah yeah and i didn't recognize the opportunity which was funny because it was like you're hanging out and you're like playing guitar and we needed a bass i think i was playing drums at that time yeah yeah you, so. you were playing drums for them right yeah. and i'm like oh this kid Gito's really cool i wish he could hang out more often <laughs> and i think that my girlfriend at the time was like um why don't you ask him to join the band i'm like oh my god that's brilliant <laughs> Why did I think of that? Yeah, because I was <laughs> like an ass. Sorry, I was high on acid. <laughs> <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> Bro, but, imagine if we could find a bassist. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right here. I know, and my band really needs one. It's so good you showed up right now. But we could really use a permanent one, though. <laughs> well, we actually had to buy him a bass, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, he's a drummer. <laughs> Well, I wasn't really a drummer either. <laughs> <laughs> Go full on ghetto style. Just take the bo- top, bo- um, excuse me, the bottom two strings off the guitar, and just put like a, a couple of bass strings on yeah. it. Yeah, you'll you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it plays, figure it out. It plays like elbow macaroni, but. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to go noodling? <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> No, oh, awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and take one of those uh, interruptions and actually play like another track from the from the guys at Helotosis. Uh, this song coming up off of their brand new EP based off the novella. I'm saying that completely wrong, probably, but this is to the hilt. We'll be back with the band shortly. In the midst of this confusion.
episode. Did, did you guys get a chance to listen to it? I no? actually, I, I listened to it actually start to finish. Oh, uh, the, the I'm new sorry. Hit. <laughs> I was trying to put you on the spot, and you made me look like the asshole. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I think he's apologizing for having to listen to the whole thing. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. That you had to listen. Let me tell you what I like about it. There's not like, and you know, the the comparison thing always comes up. Like, you know, you listen to like new music. Oh, this sounds like you know, this is like old school trivium, or this is like this, or this is like this, or this is like you know, thrashy like Metallica. It's like the, the, you guys don't have a placement like that. There's, there's nobody that comes like right out like right out like it's very it's it's very interesting like i like the different layering i like the song structure like it, it's it's entertaining refreshing so the funny thing is there's two issues that i had when i joined this band one was Transition telling nightmare. people the name because <laughs> they're like what's the name i'm like holotosis <laughs> like, they're like what like holotosis they're like like bad breath i'm like well, kind of but from hell <laughs> I was like, it was. It came with a band. It, was, it wasn't my idea. And the other one was trying to explain to people what the sound was. Right. Because it's that question. It's like, well, well, what kind of what kind of metal do you play? It's like, yeah, we just get in the room and we play it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's actually something we usually try to ask people, like for our listeners and stuff too, is like if you had to describe your music. Yeah, gun to your head. What would you, you call it? What would you call your What would you call your project? But that's when we start getting into like it's like oh well this is post hardcore semi grunge <laughs> left left side with thrash punk influence. <laughs> <laughs> with post punk hardcore pop influence it's like call it punch we all just show up really smelly and don't wear deodorant and we just jam <laughs> punch <laughs> next album <laughs> taking that one so the the tracks I actually I I applaud like like the the complexity of like a lot a lot of the songs it's actually very entertaining it's very entertaining to listen to and i think the balance between um i'm a i'm a heavy guy myself like i love heavy music but I, my heavy music i need that element of um i need that element of pretty or like a like a little bit of a catchy and i think you guys have like a really good balance with that he just called you pretty to your face Thank so you. Like the clean vocals, <laughs> and then every so often you got like that metal vocal in there, and it's just kind of just takes it to like another level. And like there, there, there are some songs, and I mean, I'll put music on like anything that I do. Like I'll be doing like you know setting up the stu like just this little section of studio down here. Like I'll have, I had you guys playing. And, like every so often, it's just like, <laughs> okay, okay, I'll remember to bring that up, which won't happen because I don't remember <laughs> shit. Um, <laughs> But I, I was very entertained by it. I'm very impressed. I really appreciate that you, that you say entertained because that's kind of one of the things that I dislike about any kind of music, any style, whether it's freaking bebop, jazz, whatever, is you get replicators, replicators, replicators to the point where it's just <laughs> like it's the same riffs. It's the same breakdowns. It's this, it's, you know, and like that's what I think is missing from a lot of music is like some kind of entertaining aspect to it, some personality. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've always kind of gone with is like, you know, we try to aim for some personality with stuff. We don't want the same like the band photo shoots that are like us with our arms crossed in, in black a graveyard. Yeah. It's like, uh, Hey, I have those same photos, okay? I'm making fun of myself. Okay? <laughs> Stop sending your judgmental eyes at me. I'm not talking shit about you. I only talk I shit about myself. Literally, just put something out with like all five of us in black t-shirts. <laughs> so if you were, if you've been in a well, band for more than a year and you don't have at least five pictures at a beach and five in front of a train track or or like an abandoned <laughs> mill, then you, well, yeah. It's no, now I can't do either. Music video in a warehouse. <laughs> now, I can't, now I can't do either of those two options. I do see that. This is the interview that la only lasted twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we're already at it. We're already over a half hour. You guys are doing okay. just fine. Um. Well, no, to to your point though, I think the scary because there's a, there's a little bit of scariness to that too. Like if you wanted to actually reach out, and like look, look, I don't think it's actually possible anymore to actually reinvent anything. I mean, if you look hard enough, somebody's probably already done it, <laughs> like in some way, shape, or form. But like the scary thing is like being like brave enough. It's like, listen, I have a creative vision. I don't want to be like this dude who just like bass drop breakdown, bass drop ba breakdown, bass drop breakdown finish. Sounds like my love language. Which might be, fun. <laughs> which might be fun for like you know a fifteen minute, a fifteen minute like little mosh sesh at like a show. But like it's like I actually want to like you know like be different. I mean that's it takes it takes balls, man. Thanks. I think, you know, there's no other way to live for me. I'm just too awkward 
to <laughs> to fit in, but you know, uh, I can I have words, so I have goods with words. I have awkward <laughs> balls and I use them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try stuffing those into your underoos. <laughs> I keep popping out from side to side. And just to confirm, those those tracks that I did listen to, that's what's coming out on March fifth for the people, right? Yep. All right, you guys, you guys should be impressed. Nice. Should be impressed. If you're not, then whatever. Shut up. You suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's our motto. We keep it our listeners. <laughs> you don't like this, you suck. Yeah. It's so, not us, it's you. Yeah. If you don't chew Big Red, then fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with my hands? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I do love me some Fig Newtons. <laughs> <laughs> I could quote that whole movie. <laughs> what movie? Yeah. <laughs> that movie's amazing. Tell Day Nights. Right up there with Step Brothers. I'm yeah. just the best there is, plain and simple. I wake up and Here's I Here's the deal, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come at you like a spider monkey, Chip. <laughs> oh, the two fucking kids. <laughs> I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> How many copyright claims are we going to get hit with? <laughs> <laughs> well, Shit, one of my favorite lines, like when, they, when he gets dropped off at the grandkids' house and the, the grandmother starts like slapping him. Yeah. <laughs> What the hell is he compared to? He's like, you're going to break us down like a something. Like, what the fuck does he say? Wild horses. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> something like that. You're going to break us down like wild you're horses. You're going to break us like wild horses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that movie's great. I was like, what'd you do today? We threw some of Grampy's old medals off the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so oh. proud of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but we digress. <laughs> Baby Jesus. <laughs> Eight ounces. <laughs> He's the Christmas Jesus. I like him the best. <laughs> I'm saying Grace. <laughs> Singing lead vocals to Leonard Skinner, and I'm in the front row, hammer drunk. <laughs> I'm with it. See, that's what it's all about. Just movie quotes and music. That's what we do here. Pass the beer. <laughs> so, got to do guys, a live guys... reaction review of uh, the Talladega Nights. Just yeah. like, sit around and. Like just get stoned to watch Talladega Nights and record it, see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those movies that you can watch it a hundred times. And right. Oh, if it's time, on, I'm watching. Like there's, there's something you missed, and it's just hilarious every time. It's not even that. It's like I've, I've only seen this eleven times. Like, it has to be twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a restart? Restart it. Uh, so you guys had mentioned a little bit. You mentioned, uh, you know, explaining to people the band name and you know what what you guys are. Where does the band name come from? Um. When I was kind of coming up, like, oh, I'm going to form my own band, and I was going through all these names, the name Helitosis kind of popped out at me, and I remember going like, oh, that's fucking horrible. <laughs> oh, it's so horrible. <laughs> but I, I was like, it's so horrible that it might actually work. And, you know, I, I did like a internet search or something, or maybe I went to a library at the time because it was forever ago. But, <laughs> but I couldn't find, you know, it just seemed like, it just stood out. And I was, you know, I was like, well, we'll just go with this for now. And um, every time I'd say it to people, the reaction was either like, oh, or they're like, oh, my God, that's awesome. Like, it's stupid, but it's awesome. And I was like, you know, I'm a firm believer. Like, everything that I try to do is like, I want to leave an imprint. I want to leave like, you know, I want a reaction. Like, if you are, are just like, oh, OK, then no. Yeah. <laughs> Glazed over eyes. No good. So. You know, if you're not reacting to it, you're either going to hate us or you're going to love us, but you're, you're going to have something. And, you know, if it's not going to be love, then I'll make you hate me. So, you know, I'm known for if I get frustrated with the way a show is going because I'm very hard on myself when we play live. Like if I'm fucking up, my clothes are coming off. Gonna say. <laughs> like, you're going to remember me. It might not be for musicianship, but <laughs> and I'm not pretty for all you listeners. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is a crap shoot if like the shirt comes off then yeah. it's like all right is this getting better or is this going downhill <laughs> like, it might the, just pant, be the pants come off then you know it's going down <laughs> you know what kind of party it is mm. yeah. <laughs> how many uh how many f-ups does it require to actually get down to uh the skibbies usually at least a couple i mean i don't know that there's a set amount it's you know i'm just an emotional guy who <laughs> says he wears skibbies <laughs> For all of our sakes, I'm just hoping. I was say wishful thinking. I have a couple pairs of forceps actually that I just clamped in my um, my circle, my my uh, foreskin. Oh. 
<laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Now you won't forget me. I've been hitting the head a lot. <laughs> You'd be surprised. That's why I like you. <laughs> it's a good thing to say these things like a half hour, 40 minutes into the interview because this would have gotten a hell of a lot safer. It's like, there's a chance he might actually start taking clothing off. <laughs> Although we are recording. We are? Yeah, why not? Dude, social media, I, I've been told that like social media is like this thing. Like you got to use all of it. The, the whole thing. The, the, use, the trap. The I don't you, believe in technology or alcohol. The YouTubes and the face me's and the... <laughs> but I know it works. And the twatters and the... I'm a man of many convictions. The I just talk about my record. In different states, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we was on camera. <laughs> It's actually pointing right at you, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm just fighting, pulling the shirt up. That's why I rolled back a little. <laughs> you got <laughs> get a good view. This microphone's in the way of my. Nipples. You got two relatively okay angles in this like little corner over here. You got the wall of beer over there, and you just got these banners over here. So it, like, kind of makes it look like it makes sense. Rest of the time, it's just the basement. <laughs> oh, and banner room. Oh, there's a bunch, bunch of stuff over there. Stuff happens down here. Um. So kind of a weird question. Well, maybe a weird question, maybe not. But one that I'm always interested in. So the um the folks of the band. Would you say you are a live driven band or are you a uh, concept yes. and content driven? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it depends on who you ask. <laughs> it depends on whose nipples are out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? No, it, it, I I enjoy the live part. It's a lot easier to fuck up and people forget versus recording. Um but obviously with you, for Josh, I feel like it's more of the concept. Because like I said, all of the the recordings and the video and picture stuff, like all that aspect of it is strongly driven by him. And the part of it that keeps you engaged in the band. Like, I've, how long have I, have I been with you before, you know? Uh, I think it's eight, 2012. Nine yeah. It's been like 10 years you've been stuck with me, you poor bastard. So without any growth or something to hold you in. So, <laughs> like, obviously the live shows are, are part of that. But a large part of it, too, is all the other stuff, which would be more of the concept and the, sure. you know, the peripheral. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, for me it was always like, you know, we should be able to strip down to a three-piece. And we should be able to take a club and just rock the fuck out and, you know, have a good time, show our asses, literally and figuratively. And so I think that we try to do that, you know, like our live shows are, you know, usually pretty engaging. Again, I think like when I get on stage, I'm definitely kind of an attention hog. Like we've always had like a set thing happen where we get on stage and we start playing like we used to usually open up with the song Dick Witch. And it's like a song that literally is supposed to be antagonistic in a way like the chapter what you, you know my ex-girlfriend <laughs> not biblically and so i don't know if i'd be uh, scared by a girl with that for a nickname or intrigued <laughs> <laughs> oh you'll find out why it's like willing to find out <laughs> it's on the bathroom wall um yeah we usually like we'll, we'll end up like playing this song and it's very antagonistic in that like the song stops and it's kind of like there's a dead air and people you know kind of go like what the fuck is going on here so they'll start walking out and if i see somebody walking out the door i'm calling them out you know i don't care if we're in the middle of the song and i'm playing and singing a lyric like i'll continue playing the guitar but i'm like hey you in the red fucking hat where are you going what's the matter did i say something wrong i'm sorry tell your girlfriend she's cute you know but like uh, we try to engage and that was one of the hardest things that i've tried doing like coming out of I was in bands playing you know, as a singer was playing guitar singing but also engaging the audience and in a three piece you know like you have to engage the audience somebody has to be live you know we have to you know try to have some banter but you got to engage the audience so um, I just rambled myself out of the question <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what were we talking about? Take your shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> it's not going well. Uh, live performance versus the concept and oh. something like that. Yeah. So I think, you know, we should be a healthy dose of both. But I, there's definitely, you know, I, I realize like trying to keep a band active and this band's, you know, Chris has been with me for 10 years and it was, you know, about five years before that that I started it. Like, 
you have to keep your your people engaged you have to like you can't do the same songs every week at a practice over and over and over you have to write new music you have to like you do photo shoots do videos you keep them interested or else like you know what's the point and you've always been really great chris when it comes to being receptive to i'm like Okay, I want to blow something up, and we're gonna. And you're like, all right, whatever. Like, <laughs> you want me to buy pizza? <laughs> oh yeah, that is my move, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I did buy pizza for that one. Yep, yeah, and that one. Yeah, I brought pizza that one. Never homemade though, so I'm not that big of a kiss up. Hey, kiss ass is the, is the title I prefer. I'm oh, a kiss ass. I got my foot in the door and then never did it again. <laughs> it's, how, it's how you glow up, all yeah. right, in, in the industry. <laughs> Tease him a little, and then you pull the rug out from under him. That sounds I like my, 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 my love life. <laughs> <laughs> the bone down. Uh, so, uh, you guys are a three-piece. Now, all the three-piece combos in my life have been food-related. Mm. So, if you guys were a, an entree, who would be the meat, the starch, and the vegetable, and what would you be? That might be the weirdest question I've ever heard asked on the show. Josh is definitely the meat. <laughs> <laughs> For now, sure. what, kind, what kind of meat are you, Josh? I'm I don't, like meatloaf came to mind. Actually, meat candy came to mind, which meat is meat candy. Yeah, it's so uh, I'm gonna go. Um, <laughs> 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 what yes. the fuck is meat candy? <laughs> it's like meatloaf wrapped in bacon with like a candied barbecue ketchup around it. Okay, so who's the starch? Hmm. I don't know. I think and who's the who's the veggie medley? Do you guys want to own something? What do you think? <laughs> no, well now I want to see what you think. <laughs> yeah, let's see what she said. Now, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I would say that you're the fiber. You're definitely the, the fiber. fiber. Yeah, you're the vegetable. You're the like, you know, the healthy. The health. That's, you're probably the healthy fine. one. <laughs> you know. Fair enough, because when he said three piece, I was thinking oh, I could go for a junior bacon with fries, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nuggets right now. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, I guess you're the starch. But no, what starch? What kind of starch? Am I mean, a potato? Yeah, definitely mashed potato. Like just mashed potato. Oh, Not like loaded. Potato. Lots of butter, some chives. Candied I mean, meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> There's some carrots and candied some broccoli. Vegetables. I don't, yeah. <laughs> oh, we got like let's go asparagus or you know let's let's give some you know. Make your pee smell weird. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's the best interactive vegetable there is. It's like immediate too. Yeah. Yeah. See you in just a little bit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the worst is when you forgot. <laughs> when you're taking a piss, you're like, what the fuck's wrong with, wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm dying tonight. Got a date later tonight, and I had asparagus for lunch. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Quick, drink oh, some that doesn't smell juice. weird, too. <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> what? Well, you, you know. I did get that vibe. If you vibe, take a shit so. in the middle of it, she won't think about the asparagus smell. That's, what I, that's my trick. This isn't going well, and I already took all my clothes off, so. <laughs> we can just both get really comfortable, or one of us can get really uncomfortable. But I'm willing to go the distance either way. I'm a lover, not a fighter. Whichever one of you shit my pants is really going to have a problem. <laughs> Well, based on the level of importance, that's definitely one you'll remember. So. <laughs> that's right. You'll be telling stories about me forever. <laughs> Never forget. I'm here to remind you that bad can always be worse. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get that tattooed on me. <laughs> that seems like an honest disclaimer. <laughs> Could be worse. You have to ask another weird question, Dave, because like I tell you what, that one just knocked me completely off All whatever right. page I was on. Marry one, fuck one, kill one. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so if you had to marry, kill, or fuck anyone in the band, no. <laughs> Gino. Well, which one? Yeah, which one? Mary? All of them. <laughs> All right. No, I wouldn't want to kill you. I want In what order, though? Well. All right. Now you're making me. Well, you can go the nice Christian route and say marry, then fuck, then kill. Or you can or, say kill, <laughs> It's marry, a Christian thing to do, <laughs> to or, marry and fuck yeah, yeah, first yeah. and then kill. You're in a band called Helitosis, and you're worried about the Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Just like the Bible intended. Yeah. <laughs> or you could go the book route, which would be marry, kill, then fuck. Yeah, I was thinking they have to be dead <laughs> first. 
<laughs> they have to be dead first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but enough about you. She goes life. like, yeah, I'm still in Winchenden. Yeah, at first I was like, oh, why didn't you pick me? And I'm glad. <laughs> like, I has nothing in this for it's me. Not, it's not because I don't love you. It's just because I don't want to marry you. Again, <laughs> it <just> makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that would be horrible. We can keep going down this weird question <laughs> avenue, man. I got plenty of them. <laughs> you know what? I think I feel like you've segued. Maybe we can of- officially do the. Uh, I think I think we can. The, the six rando questions, not necessarily yeah. about your music. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and we fully intend full offense oh. on every one of these questions. Well, I don't know. Like my question seems safe now, based on what you're asking. <laughs> so we want to just keep on going. Like I said, no matter how bad something gets, it can always get worse. All right. <laughs> Seems like I only wrote down five, so I'll have, to, I'll, have to figure, I'll have to figure one out on the fly. We know these. All right, we'll do an easy one. You could have a superpower. Everybody's superpower. What, what's the superpower you would you would have if you could choose? Not random, like a spider bites you, and all of a sudden you're spitting. I just want to lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's not a superpower, right? <laughs> Seems like it. Jesus. I'm like, don't eat the burger. <laughs> <laughs> Food resistance, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a total pervert, so I always go for like see through vision, x ray vision. Okay. Just or one layer, though. It's very honest. It gets weird. That's very you can honest. Do invisible, too, though. Yeah, but then that's like hard. Then you got to work to be quiet. Then, then you got to sneak in places. Then you're like a places. permanent peeping Tom, sure. you know? Just yeah. <laughs> like, I'd rather just look at it and be like, all right. Is your semen <laughs> Then they don't invisible? know. That's the thing. Huh? If, is your semen invisible? Because obviously, <laughs> if you know, you want to be invisible to, to like peep on people. You know, they're just, like, standing there, and, like, suddenly they get covered in cum. They're like, oh, where did that come from? Oh, it's raining out. Or is it invisible, you know? All I know is that is the last time I go to that massage parlor. <laughs> <laughs> did you cry? That was a very honest answer, by the way. Yeah. I'm proud of you for that. What do you got? It's like, I'm doing this, and this is why. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Had this conversation. Not saving people or nothing. Fuck that. <laughs> What's Gino's superpower? Um... Uh... I mean, flying would be pretty cool. I think. Like a pilot's license? Mm. No, like a. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want You want to have wings? Bird. Wait, that's how you want to fly? <laughs> Not just take are off. You flying or flapping? <laughs> well, it's both. So you'd have to flap to fly. Well, how would you fly? Well, I, well, if I was flying, I wouldn't be fapping with my flappers. I tell you that much. <laughs> Fa- Did you say fapping with your flappers? <laughs> What's up? I would totally fap with flappers if I had that power. <laughs> All right, another easy one. We all know the rules of Fight Club, correct? Yep, nobody talks about Fight Club. Rule number one. If you could fight anybody, alive, dead, any time in history, who would we fight? And why? Anyone. He's looking right at you. (laughs) (laughs) I will step outside. (laughs) By myself. (laughs) Listen, there's a reason I can run my mouth for so long, okay? (laughs) This I've got quite a lot of practice. scars. <laughs> this this oh, answer just t- got interactive. <laughs> <laughs> Bring the camera. <laughs> yeah. See, that's a tough question because then because you can fight people for different reasons. Yeah, you can I fight mean, somebody because you didn't like what they did. You can fight somebody because you don't feel like they did it enough. <laughs> can, we got we've had some we've had some mixed answers on this show, right? We've gotten the classic Hitlers, you know. We've gotten some of the. I'm enjoying this breakdown uh, though. Yeah, mm. this is good. But we want to we want to find out the the meat and potatoes, mm. if you will. What would be of, priority of on your you list? Are. Like, would it be something that somebody did, something that somebody said, or just because you just don't like what their face looked like? Just gotta deliver one of these. Oh yeah, but I don't know their name because I couldn't even bother listening to them long enough to find out what their name was. Okay, there's definitely been a few of those. But that's the thing: it's to say hit somebody, because that's just punch them in the face. Like, dude, you're ugly. You know, you say something stupid. But like to fight somebody, you gotta have a good reason. Yeah. All right. Unless you're drunk in a bar and an idiot, and your girlfriend thinks that they're harder than you are. But <laughs> you know, if you pick one guy, but I'm bad with names, so I don't know anyone that I'd want to fight because I just can't think of their name. Fair enough. Thanks. So next, thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would fight anybody. I don't got no grudges. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Not a single person. Nah. On this earth, not a not a single person on the planet. No, uh, can I change my answer? Now we are going to say Dave on you. <laughs> now, <laughs> now it's me. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to see because how far I can get. Like, like, <laughs> come on, I won't hit you, man. Like, Nobody ever. 
You'd be like that guy in that movie when they're trying to actually start a fight where they lose. Like it was like one of their homework assignments. It was that guy that was like kept like pushing the priest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's the water. He's spraying he's the just, sidewalk. He's, he's spraying he's him with the hose. Trees. The guy like comes and slaps him in the ear. <laughs> <laughs> he gotta lose a fight. He picks a fight with the priest and gets an ass kicked. Wait, what, what, is that? What, what is that? Is that a uh, fight club? Fight club. Fight club. Oh, fight club. Okay, one of the yeah, assignments yeah. was you have to go start a fight. Yeah. And you're gonna lose. I oh, love that okay, guy as yep. an actor too. The guy that uh, uh, there's so much Martin. inside in that movie. The guy that like... starts that fight. He's in a good show called Mindhunter on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. You've oh seen yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Super great. Show. It's nothing I've personally tried yet, but I'd actually be willing to bet it's actually much harder to start a fight than it is to. Depends on who you ask. I think the jury's out on that one. I, I mean, we have yeah. this place right down the street. It's like literally five seconds down the road. I, I've never been in there without there not being a fight. There was one time I saw a fight happen that one of the guys actually didn't know why he was fighting, but he was like, all right, fine. And, uh, we also <laughs> have a place. Chick's Tavern right down the street. We have another place that's also up the street where, uh, at, what was it, 6 p.m. on a Saturday, two people got stabbed. So ah. so that's that's the kind of fighting that goes on in yeah, this area. Can get hammered there for like 18 bucks, though. I mean, that's pretty smart. <laughs> I can't imagine why fights start there. there. <laughs> <laughs> they got a lot to talk about. <laughs> hammered at noon. Like, where do you June. go from there? A shot and a beer. It'll be a buck 50. What? <laughs> like, holy shit. What do you got, man? Anyone. Anyone. Ever. Definitely a girl. Um... <laughs> So I'm gonna go. Okay, uh, <laughs> yeah. so I do have a certain so girl. So what in woman? Mind. She's what like, woman would beat your ass? She's six foot something, <laughs> and she just she deserves an ass beating. Ronda Rousey? No, <laughs> this is somebody I, I used somebody that I used to know. No, I I I okay, I'm, much like Gino. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm saying. not really a fighter. Um, yeah, but, I wouldn't choose to fight somebody. But I mean, you know, obviously, if 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 there was like a. a you know, I had to. I think it, it would probably be. Uh... Would you fight Chris in my honor? I'd fight Chris. He wants to just... fight me now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would. I mean, yeah. I'm so guessing. I'm guessing Chris is the enforcer in this group. <laughs> no, he's the no drummer. No one fucks with the drummer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chris and I have had a lot of fights. It, we've we've definitely gotten over a lot of issues, and it's funny because I think somewhere along the lines. This band has almost been like a, a help group to some degree. <laughs> like, you know, we just come to practice and everybody's like, oh, I fucking had a rough day, blah, blah, blah. But Chris and I used to, we used to argue a lot and we've gotten a lot better. Interesting I, you say that when he's not at the table. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually, I actually, I want to tell this story real quick because in the, in the album, there's a, a song called um, Imprisonment in Tartarus. And it's the last song. And there's, um, there's this symbol hit in it. And it's symbolic of kind of him and I and our relationship over the years. Um, I'm going to talk about the symbol hit in imprisonment in Tartars because I was I saying apart. while you were peeping that uh, <laughs> you and I have, have argued over the years. We fought over the years. And um, so there's a symbol hit that's in imprisonment and it's in a, in a little breakdown. And it started off when we were first working on the song. There's a part at the end of this measure where I kind of like slap the guitar and, just Bing! and I was like, hit your cymbal at the same time. And he was like, no, don't tell me what to do. I play my drums, not you. Yeah, and I'm like, bitch. just do it at the same time. Like, otherwise it doesn't make sense. And he's like, okay. And so we start playing. I'm like, bing. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? And so from there, like, I think we had a heated argument, too. So now every time I make sure I look at him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hard eye contact. Yeah. And That's so when we do. recorded it, <laughs> I was like, you know, okay, it's been fun and games this whole time, but, you know, this time, for real. Mm -mm, no fucking way. <laughs> he wouldn't do it. So I had to, like, take some spoken word from the album and put it at a rhythm in there so that it measured out so that it actually sounds like it's supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Worked around the stubbornness of the drummer. I'm with it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Nicely, Hold your uh, always got to get the last word. Nicely done. Yeah. Proud of you. You have the you know you have the advantage because if you wanted to you could literally be the loudest instrument in the room. Yeah, depending like, on that's like, how you tune it. That's why I like playing the drums too. Yeah. You play in like bars and stuff, and depending on how big their amps are, especially like smaller clubs, I'll have as a PA. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I can't turn down. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> can't even spell PA. <laughs> no, it's had a lot of band arguments that are trying to actually have like an actual conversation and like one guy's over there just like tuning or diddling or something so you shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> see that guy controls control shit 
Yeah. Oh, I know. Get a couple of good Chinas up in there. Like, you'll all be deaf before you're <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> like, I wear hearing protection because a lot of it is gone. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Tinnitus is real. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I used to yeah. get my balls busted all the time for wearing ear protection. And I tell people, I'm like, you know, 42 now. I started playing in bands when I was 12. And mm-hmm. I can still hear it better than anyone else. Yep. I was like, why would you fuck with that? Yep. You know, like, once it's gone, it's gone. Oh, it sucks. Uh, I feel like we're in a generation, though, now where it's becoming more globally accepted. Mm-hmm. In yeah. fact, people actually... Well, it's more yeah. comfortable, too. Like, if you're yeah, at a you show... You can hear what the fuck's going on. Yeah. It's like <laughs> I've actually so heard that. Like, I've never... Because, yeah. like, cause, like I, I resisted for, like... A, I still do, because, like, it's just... I don't know. Just... I'm Probably because half it's already gone, so now you. <laughs> well, I'm physically retarded, so like when I try to jam things in places to like help, it's like, why is everything? <laughs> it's, like, it's like I don't think I'm doing it right. What does this have to do with your love life? It's a piece of cotton like this big. I mean, what the hell am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I get the tinnitus pretty bad, so I get those those eargasm. Uh, ear mm-hmm. earplugs or whatever. You can still hear certain frequencies or whatever. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's what mm-hmm. I use. They're actually, they've done some studies. There's certain psychedelics that they say help regenerate your, your auditory cells. At least they really? make you, structure. At least they make you think you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It's I, all inside I your head. Too. <laughs> so, I hear everything great. Like, you can't, like, not hear, listen to anything if you're sleeping because it's just like. <laughs> yeah. So what the hell's I, was the, I was the armor for my unit for three years, and I was also, I'd lead all the ranges and stuff. So all the 50 cals and the grenade launchers and all that, like. Sometimes you have earplugs and sometimes you don't, you know. Yep. <laughs> mm. Like there's just random times where I'll Put just put them like, in backwards by accident. <laughs> like, why is it so loud? <laughs> like people look at me like, why are you making that face? And my ears are just like totally tweaking out in different directions, and all I can hear is is squeaking, screaming. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Ah. So we definitely go with the earplugs, and I'm 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 proud of that, and I'm I'm also proud of some of the. The restorative psychedelics that, that may have uh, <laughs> may, may have helped. I can <laughs> hear my hair growing, dude. I can. <laughs> hey. All right, so no lie, there was a certain experience where I could hear the transmission of a con- of an Xbox controller. I could hear mm. the signals being sent from the ac- to the. I was like, I think my hearing's wah, back. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell the VA. <laughs> <laughs> they keep giving me the drugs. I still do have tinnitus though, but it's not as bad. Nice. But anyway. But anyway. That was a good digression. Good you job. are. You're a good digression. Hmm? Thanks, man. You're welcome. Don't make it weird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know me? <laughs> All right, I got to set this one up a little bit, but so this one's sometimes fun. Wait, what number are we on? Uh, I think this is number three. You didn't even need six because we I know. This track. Yeah, it, don't, it, it never matters. <laughs> I'm just going to ask you a whole <laughs> bunch of fucking weird questions. I think so we wait, did this segment like the last time we had abandoned. We did this segment. I think we got through like two, and that was about the end of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we digressed quite a bit. Yeah, lots of digression. But um, but I'll set, I'll set this one up. You got to use your imaginations on this one. Now, what I want you to think of is like any recorded piece of uh, music that you would actually listen to on a regular basis, even if you want to include your own. So let's say you're walking down the street and this evil witch like bumps into you, like gets all pissy about it, get, puts a bat, like a puts a spell on you. When you listen to music for the rest of your life, you will not be able to hear one of the elements of the song, either the vocalist, the vocals, the guitars, or the drums. Sorry, bass. <laughs> you can stay. <laughs> bass is cool. <laughs> and this is for the rest of your life. Anytime you listen to music, what would you be able to live without for the rest of your life? The vocals. Yeah, because the the drums drive the song. Yeah, the guitar c- pretty much carries the melody in most of them. And yeah. at that point, if you've already heard it, mm-hmm. so I mean, it would suck if you hear a new song because you don't know we can't really sing along. But most people sing the lyrics wrong anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so you're already singing what you're singing in your head anyway. I just pictured so. fucking Vince Neil's performance. Hashtag footy cart when I'm real. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can do without that. <laughs> Come on, man. Vince Neil's an icon. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'd say guitar. Yeah. Cause I feel like you can, whatever like chord pattern. I mean, maybe if you're talking like m- metal where there's no chord structure, but like you can replace that with pretty much anything. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Like I, know, I think I think words and like the the actual Keyboard. lyrics and stuff is a big part of. Yeah. Need the hook. Music. Oh, yeah. Need the story. Need the uh, need the action. Uh-huh. You need to so learn like how that. to hate yourself with the vocals. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that with just guitar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my mom taught me that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know if that was a. <clears throat> <laughs> next question. Next question. <laughs> All right, this is when we learn uh, how how much of a piece of shit you really are as a human being. So if you're at a grocery store, eye contact. <laughs> eye contact. You get the you get the full cart of the groceries. You know, you you go out to your car, you load them up into the trunk. What happens to that cart when you're done? Leave it in the space, bring it to the store, or bring it back to the cart. Uh, like the that that um, the receptacle. That, that thing. The receptacle. The, the, the cart <laughs> receptacle. The cart receptacle. I yell at my mom, who is like 72 and can barely walk. I'm like, bring that fucking cart back, you <laughs> piece of shit. I don't care if you can't fucking walk. You brought it here. You bring it back. I get mad at her. And the other day, I was like, I, you know, I, I, I did stop yelling at her because it just wasn't doing any good. And, you know, she got in the car and I was like, you know, it really fucking bugs me that you don't bring the cart back you just leave it on the sidewalk and she goes well you really bugged me too <laughs> i was like <laughs> okay i mean i really didn't have much to say to that except for right like, that's yeah. a, that's like answering a middle finger with a middle finger yeah <laughs> it's like once the first person gives you the gives you the finger that's it you lost yeah <clears throat> she not, lost i don't know you could do two Okay, so when it comes to road yeah, the rage, double bird. Yeah, speaking from experience, <laughs> poop the, on it. Pew, pew, you know, <laughs> <laughs> who really loses in that one? No, no, no. <laughs> so road rage experiences in Massachusetts are, are pretty common. Uh, I found that something more offensive than the middle finger in a road rage incident is actually the the thumbs up. The thumbs up and <laughs> really? smile. Drives that is way wave. more offensive. The thumbs when up smile and then start <laughs> magically doing the speed limit. <laughs> smile like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, bud. That's why Good the best job. way to get out of a fight is give him a kiss. <laughs> yeah. I, um... The Brad Marsh on the lick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come at me, That's bro. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? What do you do with your, with your cart? I put it away. Unless there's some asshole park like an asshole. Because then, you know, two wrongs do make a right. I don't know. Uh, any math major would tell you that. <laughs> so. I uh, <laughs> used to love putting the, gar- the grocery cart in the back of the truck that takes up, like, three spaces. <laughs> yeah. I went to Home Depot. <laughs> so got... you and a buddy, like, just, like, put, like, three carts in the back of the truck. <laughs> 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 or set it up just in the right spot so you know he's going to hit it. But then it's not your fault because you hit the cart. The cart was sitting there. Mm. One of my best investments ever was going to Home Depot and spending seven ninety nine on the assortment of zip ties that I keep in the door of my car at all times. <laughs> The cops if I, love that. Yeah, if I, if I see you leave your cart in the parking lot, I'm zip-tying it to your door handle. <laughs> nice. What's up? Nice. I yeah. did one hand one of them a couple months ago. Why would they just... not be in their vehicle at that point? Oh, so it's probably not their cart. Though. Oh, no, you can do it. To, you do it while... <laughs> so no, some other it. asshole no. has a cart out there. No, you do like, it. The fuck this guy. He's doing this. <laughs> no, that comes out part. with his cart. He's like... <laughs> that's the best part. You make eye contact while you're doing it. <laughs> oh, well, they're in the like, he comes like behind me. Oh, this asshole thinks he can just take three carts home. I'm going to fucking zip tie this shit to him. Zip tie the carts together and then tag it on their vehicle. You know? <laughs> I did a one hander the other month. There was this chick on her phone that just took all her groceries out, put them in the back of her SUV, and then left the cart in the like on the line between the two vehicles. I just one handed it, grabbed it, and pulled it behind her vehicle and kept walking so she <laughs> that she couldn't back out. <laughs> hey, we got some pussy up in here. <laughs> oh, <Hi>. my names. <laughs> oh. Hey, bud. Yeah, it t- took longer than normal. Yeah, we're about an hour in. This is about right. <laughs> He's got something to say. Hey. What was that? Meow. It's our cat, Canuck. Canuck. He's like, you boys, this time's just about up here. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. Uh, what was that? Was that five? Where am I? Oh, shit. No Not, wrong app. Hold on. Wrong app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'm on Tinder. <laughs> oh, how'd I get on Grinder again? <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> I don't know, babe. All right. All right, I got food. I got a, I got a food related question. We'll start with the first one. If this one kind of doesn't land as well as like, I like it to, we'll, we'll do the second one. It's a hot dog, a sandwich. No, no, never. I knew it. You well, actually, it? I did technically make a hot dog sandwich the other day. Mm. So I was really drunk and hungry, and all I could find was frozen hot dogs, a couple pieces of yellow cheese, and a bun. So yeah. Is that a sandwich? Because I yeah, cut it in half me, yeah, and poured a layer of, of it and cheese. And like, who's doing the interview here? Yeah, but it, wasn't <laughs> a, but it wasn't a hot dog bun. It was more like a That's why it's sandwich. a sandwich. Did you wrap a said bun around said wiener? or No, I cut a, the hot dogs in half, and then put like a, a layer of It's a savage dog. move. Savage. Yeah. Okay. More, yeah. So I take back my answer. It is so who would you find? Sometimes if you're drunk enough. 
<laughs> so it's really my answer is if you're drunk enough, anything's a sandwich. Hey, sure. Uh, good luck trying to convince her of that. <laughs> <laughs> Can of soup and some. Um. <laughs> Josh, you look like you were working on something over there. Uh, it's a hard. I mean, there's like a whole thread on Sub Club with this group on Facebook about it. I mean, like, are you a part of said Sub Club? Yeah. I, okay. You know, I tend to. I'm a voyeur. Though. Are you a hoagie whore? Uh, are you a grinder about, finder? We talked about the food <laughs> thing, right? Like, you know, uh, that dude just threw away half a fucking whopper. Nobody can see me reach into this basket. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so how long have you been homeless? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have, have a house, music? but not a home. <laughs> 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 not homeless. I'm just, you know, preparing for when I am. <laughs> <laughs> had to practice. Had to come to term with. So things. what was the uh, what was the general consensus from the uh, from the experts? Yeah, We've knows. never had an expert opinion on this subject. I think that it's it's still hotly debated. You know, I think there's like two. The theories. science What's is your out. Opinion? Yeah, you know, I mean. What side are you leaning? I mean, it's I, you, criteria wise to be able to break down the question. It's like it all depends on how you feel about tubular food, bread and meat. You know, like <laughs> does that mean a sub's not a sandwich? A sub can be a grinder or a hoagie or you know. What well, I mean? they're all the same. We live in they? a very transitional world too. Well, no, they're all the same. <laughs> thing. I've met a couple of hot dogs that are sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best joke I've ever. <laughs> I'm Josh, sorry. Like I'm I, done. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> so if we're talking about two, it, if we're talking about tubular <laughs> bread. You can go back in the day, like with the old school subway, when they used to actually V-shape that cut, and yes. then they would actually like pile it in. So now you have nice. a, a massive tubular bread mm. with whatever topping. Like mayonnaise, or filling. like mayonnaise sandwich. Is this mayonnaise sandwich a ma- is a sandwich? I think it's more the filling than the bread. Okay. A hot dog isn't a sandwich. It's it, not like it doesn't qualify as a sandwich just for the me. fact that you are. It's like a sausage. You are intestine. Sausage isn't a sandwich. Hi. All right. Oh, hello. You ever had a meatball and sausage sandwich though? Well, it's a grinder. Uh, is it what makes it a grinder? It's the, the same tubular bread. But the sausage, shape of the bread. Just, you're just adding <laughs> sauce and more meat. The sausage isn't tubular, yeah. though. You don't know it's that. It's cut. You've not seen cut my sausage. <laughs> oh, I saw it. <laughs> Shh. How do you know it was cut? <laughs> <laughs> it was a party trick. <laughs> it was in college. <laughs> Anything goes in college. That freaking rabbi lied. <laughs> <laughs> Said it was shaved steak. No. <laughs> I don't Seriously. know. I think I think we got six questions out oh, of that. We did. A brisket. I think a we did good. You guys survived, <laughs> but Woo-hoo. we are still judging you. It was semi painless. So is cereal soup. All right, ran, we'll, <laughs> we'll go back to a music. Nah. We'll go back to a music related one. So let's say you guys are going on tour. Hell, tell us this is going on tour. What's the dream tour right now? They could be any artist from any era. You could headline. You could open. You could be a middle guy. Let's say you're bringing four bands on a world tour. Who are you going with? Are we going to do each of us or just? Yeah, we, we got to do everybody. Four bands? That's a, that's a loaded ticket, loaded bill. It's a, I like big festivals. <laughs> I'm a big oh, fan. it's a festival, I'm, okay. Well, I mean, I would consider that. I mean, a five-band show. I mean, okay, it's a, it's, a, it's slightly larger than normal. <laughs> that's what she said. So we, and we get to choose which I band wish. we would go with. <laughs> Not to me. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, well, I would say like would, the, if that's too many though, let's give it, we can we can we can narrow that. You can bring let's say three. That's more right. of a that's more of a that's more of a digestible. Yeah. All right, Pantera, Mastodon, and Lamb of God. Okay. You headline in that show? Or you do? You, you no, open? We're opening. Okay. <laughs> that's it. No pressure. I was gonna say definitely not headlining. Maybe a little higher than opening, but definitely not like. No, we got 15 minutes set before these guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're basically sound, the road during sound check. <laughs> we're just yeah, we're try out your instruments and then we'll get out of here. It's just we're the band that people go in, figure out where their seats are, and go back out and get beer. <laughs> like what the hell is this? Uh, what's we doing a sound check? Uh, you wanna go? Is you want this me? a fight again? Oh, I just told you I'm you bad go? with names. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do on the spot. And then as soon as people are like, oh, what's your favorite song? It's a good thing you came for an interview. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I got Josh. (laughs) This band, like I said, I'm always down for whatever. I might not play a big part in it, but I'll be there. Okay. I've said more words than I was planning on the whole time. I know. This is actually, he's being very vocal. He's doing very well. He's doing very well. 
Like when you know, we nobody has ever actually like, one time somebody has actually asked me before. So what are you going to ask us? Like, I don't fucking know. I do everything off the cuff, man. Like, <laughs> like, like what's stuff? Like, what's that thing on your face? I try, to, <laughs> I try to read the room, man. Like you know, sometimes like, oh, dude, tell me about these songs, or like, tell me why you're stupid. I mean, like, I try to read the room. There's so like, many reasons. <laughs> That's you say. We got... <laughs> no, I'm not even going to start because I'll never end. Uh oh. No, me, not you this time. Oh, okay. I, would just say, I, feel, I feel like we almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> right there. I was just waiting for that awkward silence to really take hold. <laughs> we got to start getting our guests like drunker again. People used to be down here for like five hours. Like the, the whole place would be like you stripped of anything jam? alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those instruments work over there? No. Cops are not going to get <laughs> they in definitely, They definitely don't. <laughs> All right, anyway, sorry, Josh. Go ahead. I don't know. Um, three bands. I would say... Cat's gonna knock, knock down your mic stand. <laughs> Throw up my teeth. <laughs> yeah, knock my grill out. You like that pole? They all do. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, uh oh. Oh no. This is a sausage party. You don't belong here, pussy. Um. How do you know my nickname in high school? <laughs> <laughs> What's your nickname in high school? <laughs> I guess I don't know. I would say like. America, Flotsam and Jetsam, and then Tool. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, Josh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> All right, end statement. Cool. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's your most favorite venue you've actually played live? Maybe the cannery. The cannery was pretty nice. Yep. Were they canning things? Mm, <laughs> canned laughter. Oh. Josh. They're like, you did great. <laughs> it was a place in Southbridge. Just kind of a neat club. There's like a decent sized stage, big backdrop that they project stuff onto. Um, good sound. I think that was a, that was one of the good ones. I mean, Ralph's was pretty cool. Yeah, Ralph's like and Worcester. Yeah. Love Ralph's. I'm, I'm a big fan of Ralph's. Yeah. Just the ambiance of that place. Yeah, it's like Ralph's. it's like a fun house. There's like twelve rooms. No, yeah. but, so I told you I quit <laughs> quit drinking, and um, I was hosting a burlesque troupe for a while. I was emceeing a burlesque troupe, and you know I, I quit drinking, quit drinking ten years ago, whatever. And then you know, but I'm still like the guy that's like, shots, shots, shots. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on stage. You're the shot girl. Yeah, I'm an inst. Yeah. I'm a- <laughs> You know, boobs out. Um, <laughs> I'm instigating, and I'm on stage, and I'm getting everybody, you know, like amped up, and I'm like, "Yeah, these girls are hot." Blah blah blah. I'm like, "Everybody, go get a shot." Yeah, they fucking drink up. And so some guy like walks up to the stage with two shots for me and the girl that was standing up there, Leah. Um, I can't remember her last name at the moment, but Leah. And he's like, "Do some shots," and I'm like, "I did this to myself." <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's like looking at me, holding their fucking shots up. And everybody that knows me that knows I'm sober is looking at me going, don't you fucking do it. No, no. <laughs> and I'm all like, Ugh. so I like popped in and in my mouth and was like, yeah. And then immediately ran off stage and kicked in the woman's door, <laughs> like the women's bathroom door. What Some girl's do like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I spit it out into the sink. It was just, you know, to get it because I, I, you know, I probably wouldn't have regressed back into drinking over one shot. But then again. I was play. I was waiting for it though. Yeah. I was like, if he does this thing, game on. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. Because I've only heard stories. I've only. I. I never saw a drinking Josh. Mm. But we decided that one of us would have been dead if we drank together. Very true. That'll happen. That yeah. will happen. Yep. Some people you just just can't indulge the juice around. Mm. Not that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not from experience. Well, awesome guys. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming. Thanks for making Thanks for, the trip. I Thanks know. for being had. <laughs> Many <laughs> times. <laughs> so for the listeners out there, I always ask, where, where's the best place to find you? Like, where do you want them to go? Or, like, we do have help. a website, uh, helitosis666.com. Um, I try to run everything through there, send out emails, like about early, you know, early emails before it hits social media. Where we are on twi- uh, TikTok somewhat. Uh, Instagram and Facebook. Um, there's a Twitter account that I once in a while go to, but usually I try to get people to go towards the the website. And um, 
Yeah, I'll obviously plug the show on March 5th at uh, uh, Elm Street Draft House, which is a cinema, actually. So we're doing a, a kind of a metal show, but there's going to be both incarnations of the band, and we're going to have burlesque dancers in between. Oh, shit. And because it's a movie theater, we have like a couple of videos. If you go back through our YouTube, there's, you know, different videos that we'll probably show. And I also filmed uh, something with a friend, so we're going to roll that. So, you know, it'll be a couple of videos, then we'll have Burlesque Dancer come out, then the other version it's of a hell of a release dancer. party. Yeah. Where is this? I'm uh, sorry. Millberry Mass, Elm Street Draft House, it's called. Oh, okay. And, uh, okay, it's Josh. during the day, so people can, can drive, you know? Yeah, it's 1 to 5 p.m. So even if you're far away. I have like headlights us. on my car. I don't know about you guys. I mean, I know I'm from Winchester, but we dancers. have technology. <laughs> <laughs> Are you hiring any more burlesque dancers? Why well, you you uh, have a you resume? Can, I can, I can, I can break take out the leggings if you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I find out so much weird shit about my friends. So Listen, <laughs> I don't judge anyone for how they pay their bills. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As long as you're not hurting anybody. That's it. Go ahead with your llama. <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> Awesome, man. Awesome, guys. And Helitosis is going to open. Yeah, for Helitosis. For Helitosis soon. Helitosis is going to open for Helitosis. That's, <laughs> that's not confusing cool. at all. But no. that's good. That's, oh, that, that event sounds awesome. It's like like a, if you're going to actually have like, like a release party, that's like, that sounds like the balls exactly. ass way to do it. We almost yeah. called it the breakup sex uh, show. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I was going <laughs> to ask breaking you. Because yeah. you're like, yeah, we got these burlesque dancers between, and uh, me and my friend, we. We filmed something that wasn't over there. <laughs> right. hey, uh, what'd you film? Uh, <laughs> what kind of a show is this? My dick looks huge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but this time put the tweezers down. <laughs> I love me a midget. <laughs> no judge. Judge free zone. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Nicely done, guys. Like I said, everybody should be thrilled with what's coming up. I think it's, I think it's interesting, entertaining, and and it's good stuff. Well, thanks for having me. And I've actually had the pleasure of seeing you guys live. I think that's how I may have met you, Josh, the originally. Raven. Yeah, yep. yeah. Which some unfortunate instances happened to me that night, but that's fine. I won't, I won't bore the. Oh no, do tell. I, I may have, um, I may have slightly have uh, avoided a DUI that evening. Oh. Because it was just, it was one of those situations where like everybody in my life was like actually out. so I don't like telling this story because like you're oh well, I'm ten years sober it's like it must be nice I just I, I just keep... <laughs> I'm still a piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> I'm still breaking every law known to man yeah um, <laughs> but it was just one of those days like the fiance was up in like Maine like doing wedding stuff with some friends and nobody else was around and it's like i always do that thing it's like well you know i want people to come to my shows so i have to start going to their shows otherwise i'm just that dick they ask you to like go to my stuff so i'm like yeah i'll go out to the raven i know some guys playing you guys are playing machine gun mayhem that night i know all those guys i know those, those guys, guys very awesome. well and that's you know handed out because i honestly couldn't tell you I, I remember you guys and i remember machine gun mayhem i couldn't tell you anybody else that was on that bill uh, <laughs> it was um, good I, i'm glad i'm not the only one <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm bad with names. That's <laughs> my out for everything. Listen, if the sober guy can't even remember, then I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's the one who set up the show, probably. So, no, but it, no, it was just a, it was an unfortunate situation, and I'd like to uh, thank Winchenden Law Enforcement because I did make it all the way to the town, and uh, it was it was a speeding situation, and then it turned into like, so uh, how many of you had to drink this evening? And I'm like, uh, probably like. You know what? Let, let me sidebar. <laughs> if, I, if I can sidebar, <laughs> like really. Six or seven. Well, th- in all seriousness, I went in there with 20 bucks. Well, I went in there with more than that, but I left with like a $20 bill short. So that's me getting into the show and like whatever I bought that day. Now, I drink enough beer in my life where I can generally handle my shit. So like, did I have like a decent meal that night? No, I probably <laughs> didn't. But... I was actually a little embarrassed that like I'm get I'm getting caught now, <laughs> like of the m- hundreds of opportunities I have had to like you could have like actually thrown the freaking book at me. It's like, dude, you got to be fucking kidding me. You're going to jail, dude. I get caught that night. <laughs> really? Half a course light later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he asked me. Right, I was like, oh, I just saw, I saw a couple of bands over in Worcester. I just came from there like about an hour ago. It was like probably my last drink, like kind of a thing, and like I didn't like you know. Step out, start doing the sobriety test, which, by the way, fuck that thing. That thing's hard and sober. I tried the next day. <laughs> Touch your nose. Like, what? Yeah. Well, no, you have to. 
No, the leg thing at a 45 degree angle, like right in front of you, it's like you can, you can either stand on your left or your right. They don't care, but you have to hold the leg like just like at a 45 degree angle. You have to like, hold there for like 60 seconds. Like, dude, I can't do that like a normal day. <laughs> My back uh, won't support that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like one of those things, like the second cop showed up and like, I'm standing there. They're just like, they're looking at, they're talking about themselves. They look at me. I'm just like, I'm literally like two miles from home. Just let me go home. Just let me, he's like, and the guy was like, literally, dude, you've failed miserably. <laughs> like, yeah, Mis- but that's because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I, again, I think the Winston law enforcement, um, they said, it's like, I don't want to hit you for a DUI. You don't have a record. You're not a problem. But you're not driving this car anymore. So who, who's picking you up? I would prefer nice. two people to pick you up because I don't want the car on the side of the highway. But if it has to be here until the morning, that's fine. Like, I'll, I'll live with that. So I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, because like I said, all my friends are all... <laughs> well, my parents live in town, and I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> hey, Mom. Well, I'm sure <laughs> at some point in your life they said, don't ever drive if you're drinking. Just call that, us. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> I, this, you said, you said you got your practices are kind of like a self-help. If you want to talk about, like, my mom's opinion on alcohol <laughs> and getting behind the wheel, when you if you have one beer... You're not behind the wheel anymore. She actually, like, she used to bring us all out for, like, our birthday dinners and, like, whatnot. We used to go out. She actually put a rule in place, starting with my birthday. (laughs) (laughs) We will no longer buy alcoholic beverages while we're actually out for your your birthday dinner. I'm like, what the fuck's the point of that? (laughs) So so they're doing the thing. It's like, oh, do you have anybody you can call? It's like, I'm thinking. (laughs) (laughs) DUI might be easier. She's like, He's like, all oh, my friends are probably already in the bag. I'm not calling Dave. <laughs> Wait, yeah, my, like, why'd you drag us into this? Which my dad, my my dad, my dad's a man. He calls. He's like, Dad, I need you to come pick me up. He's like, Where you at? Down, down at the police station. He's like, get picked up for DUI. He's like, they're letting me go. Just come pick me up. I need mom to wake her up. <laughs> so he drives my car home, and then I'm like sitting in like her car, like getting dri- driven home, and that's you know like the yeah. So unfortunately, I have to I have to associate that mem- memory with my time of uh, seeing Helitosis. But we all survived, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it good band vibes. There you go. I like that. I mean, there's definitely a shadow that follows us around, but usually nobody's died. So <laughs> you know that's not wood, right? <laughs> <laughs> Knock on Polymer. <laughs> all right. With that being said, guys, you're awesome. It's good good to have you. Good to officially meet you when's the uh, official release march 5th march 5th yep it'll be on spotify and apple music and all that stuff and the book will be on amazon and kindle and everything very nice dave will you take us home guest style buddy i will absolutely attempt to but i've been drinking so i probably shouldn't drive (laughs) oh you meant the other one all right yeah we are heavy metal over six pack we've been sitting here today with helitosis this wonderful three-piece band out of the tri-state area (laughs) (laughs) we are the only place for local national and international rock metal and beer reviews we thank you gentlemen for joining us on this here lovely show we wish you all the best in your future endeavors and we hope to see you rocking the fuck out at the next show thank you thank Thank you you. keep up the good work make me (laughs) (laughs) you're not my real dad (laughs) thank god All right, we like to leave the uh, we like to leave this episode. We we had a hell of a time and a, like a great time actually recording this interview. Hopefully, you had a you had a good time actually listening to it. Make sure you check out Helitosis and all of their websites, their Instagram, the YouTube, the Facebook, the web page itself will be uh, linked in the uh, in the show link. So make sure you go check them out. We are going to leave you with a song. Thank you very much for joining us, Marcus from the Heavy Metal Six Pack. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you checking out Helitosis. And this is Imprisonment Tartus. See you guys. Yeah.
fibers of blankets that smelled of his youth, of his home and his family, his childhood bed with the lumpy springs and dipping valleys of well-worn indentations. His older siblings had owned this somnambulant territory prior to him, leaving heck with the wath of fever sweats and spilled posture that created the mind's theatrical assembly line of smells to draw him onto the stage of what was his childhood cave of comfort. Sessions words I bought on the I can't be 
the one you've got. So I've got to be the one you want, right now. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.